Good morning, Sunday morning. I don't ever vlog on Sundays, but today's the exception. Home Talk gives its employees a Sunday off once every quarter. Today is that day. And so I wasn't supposed to go to Jerusalem today, but turns out I have a marathon of meetings in the city. Not at Home Talk, but starting with a catch-up session with my boy Ori Greenstein, old friend of the family, and um, he's been known to bring me some surprises, followed by a meeting with Ellie Rowe. The guy has a private jet company and many, many other things going on, so catching up with him and hearing what's up. And then some quality time with Ellie Wortman of Pico, who's just kind of one of the pioneers of the Israeli venture capital uh, landscape. And an, an old friend, just a good guy. Catching up with him, hearing what he's up to, which is a lot. It's going to be a pretty crazy day and a good way to kick off the week. Here we go. So I'm bright and early. Turns out I'm having this marathon of meetings in this small little cafe on the Prime Minister's block. So I, I think I've never been on this block before. Ben Maimon in middle of Jerusalem, the Rechavia area. Never been here before. Living in Jerusalem for many years. I still have never been on this block before. But uh, the person who chose the location, Ellie Rowe, apparently has an apartment here. And um, the cafe is this little, you'll see, it's this little stand. I figured it was a cafe somewhere to sit. Nope. It'll stand in the middle of the street. I mean, it's cute, but I'm just not sure I'm gonna have all these meetings here. We shall see, but it is a beautiful Jerusalem morning. Beautiful, perfect. Beautiful, who are you, what's your name? Ori Greenstein. Ori Greenstein, so me and your sister a year ago, way, 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 way back. Way back. Like, what, how many years ago was she in Israel? 15 or something? More. I've been in here 15 years. So, so we were hanging back then. Okay. Uh, to say you're a serial entrepreneur is like an understatement of the century. Just out of curiosity, off the top of your head, throw out a number. How many ventures are you building right now at this given moment? I'm involved in four or five different ventures when right now. When you say involved, it's yours. Yeah. Four or five. It's from hardware to software to platforms to marketplace, the whole thing. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I told you you'd be a billionaire. Don't forget the little people. Okay. And uh, something unique every time we meet, which is twice. You bring uh, something. More than that, but, oh, but oh, once we uh, uh, like, sit down and meet, exactly. This is like a super cool cafe in the middle of Jerusalem. We're sitting in this cafe I've never been to in my life. It's super funky. But I have my, my next meeting in three minutes, so show me what you brought. Front front first, front first. We got a, seriously, the guy made me this. And then, all the companies I'm advising, literally. The question is, can I walk around with a shirt with my face on it? Thanks, dude, I really appreciate it. And then the other one has the logo on the side? Correct. Love it, dude. Where do people like follow your work? Are you like vocal online at all, or no? Totally under. I'm just. Right I mean, I'm online, but like I don't post my work yet until they're. But you are looking for some. You are looking for some sales people and some CTO and some whatever. So if somebody wants to contact you, that wants to get involved, what's the best way to contact you? Facebook or Instagram. So it's Ori Andrew. Greenstein. Andrew Ori Greenstein on Andrew Facebook Ori. would be probably the best way to get in touch with. Andrew me. Andrew. It's like parentheses Ori Greenstein as it sounds. So pick the guy because he is looking for a CTO and he has some cool ideas in the works. Thanks, dude. What kind of watch is this? Wowie. Nice. Getting a lot of crap for that because of all the heat? No, but it's just it's the old version, so nice. I gotta I, I, upgrade soon. Big fan. Anyway, is Huawei on this, by the way? They're not. Cause they're, no, because they're not listed on... Because uh, right. I'm, I'm not an advisor at Huawei. Correct. These are only advisors, not people you mentor. Where's the... Okay, chuck it in there. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Have a good week. You too. Enjoy. All right, so I've had my fair share of pretty remarkable and um, extraordinary meetings over the years. Met some pretty incredible people, but this meeting takes some sort of prize. Who are you? What's your name? It's Ellie Rowe. How Ellie you Rowe. All right, so obviously we don't have long enough. We're going to have to have a follow-up meeting to talk about your whole story. And I'm putting aside for one second all the things you've done. How old are you? 49. 49 years old. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're working with every single insurance company in the world. You have more medical records than pretty much like anyone. Forget that stuff. I'm not interested in that. More importantly, talk to me about the pilot aspect of Ellie Rowe. God's been super great to me. I've been fortunate to uh, become a commercial pilot and uh, be able to fly people and use the assets that we have to really make a difference in the in the people's lives when they need it most, so, during an emergency or during a tragedy. So, okay, so first you became a pilot, but then through your business, you acquired one plane and a couple of planes, and at the end of the day, you told me, I mean, again, remarkable stories. People call you two o'clock in the morning. I have to get to another city, another state, uh, another country to get a transplant, and this is my last chance at life. You're getting out of bed, you're getting on the plane, you're picking them up, you're taking care of it, and people live. I mean, you're building an entire, let's call it, network of, I, guess, I mean, yeah, it's it's, rescue kind of services in the air is that that's what it is it's a, it's a volunteer free 
air ambulance that's uh, standing by on emergency Who to help pays people. for the gasoline alone? So there's there's many expenses in an airplane. There's the fixed expenses, which is buying the assets. Then there's you have your direct operating costs, which is the gasoline. But um, besides the acquisition expenses, you have your fixed costs of uh, you know just the hangar. Who pays for it? Flies. It's all donations. It's amazing. Unbelievable. Is there a website for this operation or not yet? So not yet, but we'll be putting it. It'll be a hotelair. Hotelair.org. What we have. All right. First of all, let me know how I can help with that in terms of the website, whatever it is. It's a lot of work that needs to be done because this is an incredible thing. It's, I don't think there's such a thing that exists in the world. To the, to the best of our knowledge, there's, there's nothing that exists like this, and uh, we'll be launching officially this summer. Love it. And uh, starting in uh, New York, where we already have our first plane, incredible. fully funded, fully paid for, and uh, we'll be in in Europe, incredible. around America, in Israel, and. Uh, many other places. Listen, if someone's watching this and they want to get involved in any capacity, whether it's a donation, whether they want to, whatever it may be, what's the best place to follow up with you? What's the place? I know you're not online. You don't do the Instagram, Facebook thing, but it's, do you want to give people your email address? What's the, you know what? I, I'd be happy to, we have a hot seller email address. Right, I'd be happy to do it. So it's Ellie.ro, it's my first name, E-L-I dot R-O-W-E. Yep. At, at Hot Soul Air, that's H-A-T-Z-O-L-A-I-R dot org. Okay. Joseph, put org. his email right there. Hit the guy up, whether it's donations, whatever it may be. I mean, listen, you're not officially fundraising, fundraising, but I'm sure people that watch this might be very interested to hear more. And uh, yeah, let's, let's stay in touch as a kickoff meeting. We'll have, we'll have many follow-up meetings. If I can help with anything, you let me know. Hello, you're a legend. Thanks. So I'm great a to legend. meet you. This guy's a freaking real-life legend. It's amazing. Keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing good for the world. Thanks. Love Thanks. I don't usually vlog on Sundays. I never walk around with this thing on Sunday. Sunday I'm at home talking. It's the beginning of the week. My head's not, I can't, my high energy is not on Sunday. But I'm like, today, today is an exception because I'm meeting you, by the way, among some other incredible people. I don't know if you know Ellie Rowe. I did not. You, you and him would get along real well. Anyway, okay. it's a topic for another time. But okay, so let's, before we jump into where we are in this remarkable place, and I, it's not even a place, it's an ecosystem, a physical ecosystem. We'll talk about that in a second. Who is Ellie Workman? Who are you? I'm a serial entrepreneur, I'm a Jerusalemite, and for the past 15 years, also a venture capitalist. Is it fair to say, I mean, 15 years you've been in the VC world longer than that? Started VC03, I started as a high tech entrepreneur in 93. So 25 years plus, but we prefer not to talk about that. So it's like you were in tech before tech was, the it was called high tech. Correct. Anyway, okay, but I mean, you're one of the, I would say, the pioneers of the, you know, this thing that everyone talks about today is the Israeli landscape, but you were there well before, you know, most of the people. And, you know, some of the big names that everyone knows you were working with early on, topic for another time. We all share, you know, everybody today, everybody wears a lot of different hats, we all have different passions. You have the VC game, you have the entrepreneur, but, but there's something that's like deeper in terms of your passion than any of those things, and that is the city. Correct. Jerusalem. Talk, talk to me about that. Tell me about that. I, I grew up in Jerusalem. I like to tell people that the city of Jerusalem runs through my veins, right? That it is something I am in love with, something I think about, I care for. It is our history, it is our present, but most importantly, it's our future. And Jerusalem is the secret to the success of Startup Nation. Most people don't know this. It's true. And, you know, we look at Jerusalem, we say there's some big successes here. My first startup, Delta 3, was the first unicorn in Jerusalem back in 1999. Oh, a unicorn, uh, close to $2 billion market cap. I know that. Okay. It is not anymore, but, uh, you know, into the dot-com bubble, close to $2 billion market so cap. Jacob was, what, a co-founder with you? Co-founder, correct. You know, we, we worked together, Jacob and I. Yeah, yeah, he told me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, we look at Mobileye, it's a huge success, and we look at Jerusalem, the place. But I like to look at Jerusalem through its people. And the city of Jerusalem has produced more creative output, more entrepreneurial output than any other single city in Israel and potentially in the world. Really? And this is the unwritten chapter of Startup Nation. It, that is interesting. I mean, I know I think of Jerusalem, I think of some remarkable companies. Obviously, you open up your app store, literally, wherever you are in the world, open up the app store, look at the top paid apps, Lightrix is all over the place, right? You look at Lightrix, that's obvious. There's obviously the Mobileye, but you know, Orcan, right? The same founders as Mobileye. If, if I like to say, if, um, if Mobileye I gave cars glasses or eyes, or Ken gives people eyes. Right? Yeah. Um, there's some crazy company, companies in Jerusalem, by the way, some of which are earlier stage, but are also doing remarkable things like, you know, you've seen for sure on the internet, the walking printer, Zuta Labs, Correct. Jerusalem company, and many, many, I can go on for hours, but I never actually framed it the way you just framed it, which is that Jerusalem has more, you know, creative output than, than any other city. That's a really interesting, I don't know if that's a statistic, but it's an interesting Well, it's, it's a statistic. I spent a lot of time studying it. How do you measure that? And I've looked at the biggest successes that Israel has had. Oh, yeah. If you map who are the people 
behind those companies, you'll find many Jerusalemites, people who grew up here, who consider themselves as Jerusalemites, even if they've moved on to other places. Yeah, you can take someone out of Jerusalem, you can't take Jerusalem out of someone, right? Is that, that is correct. Yeah, it's true. And I like to quote Frank Sinatra. He loved Jerusalem. I don't know if you know that. I did not know that. He spent a lot of time here. There's even a Jerusalem album, and I challenge you to go look for it. Not online? He, he recorded it at the Jerusalem Theater. Wow. And I say jokingly that there's this line that we all know, that if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. That's true. Jerusalem is the most complicated city uh, in the world. Understatement. Now, we know that song in the context of New York, but I think he was inspired by Jerusalem. <laughs> Listen, Jerusalem, I, there's, I'll tell you one thing. Forget for one second the entrepreneurial spirit. Like, there's, there's no other city like Jerusalem in the, I, the, the built-in paradoxes of this city. Like, the, the old and the new and then, the, you know, all the religions and the city. I mean, there's nothing like it, obviously. It's, I grew up here. I love it here. It's at the core of my thesis, right? It's the complexity of the city. The rich and the poor, the diversity of religion, the diversity of language, of right. culture, the okay. political strife, all those challenges force us to be more creative every day. Interesting. All right. So I wonder for the sake of the ADD of my viewers, yes. let's get, let's talk, let's jump right in. Where are we? What is this place? We're at Pico Kids. And in the same way that many of the companies that you've spoken about that you maybe didn't realize were founded by Jerusalemites, um, that I want to make sure we're investing in the next generation of Jerusalemites, that the forward-facing skills, the 21st century skills, remain strong with the children of Jerusalem. Right. So before we jump into Pico Kids, what is Pico? Pico is um, a venture capital fund. It stands for People, Ideas, Community, and Opportunity. I know that. It is a fund that has a strong sense of social responsibility as well. And hence the name. And while we're famous for all sorts of investments we've made, we're most proud of a lot of the work that we're doing in social enterprise. Love Pico it. Kids being the biggest enterprise, maybe the most successful startup that we have. So I think, you know, I often talk about the, um, I guess, I don't know what you want to call it, disconnect between doing good and doing well, doing good for the world. Usually those things are, you know, mutually exclusive. You either do well for your pocket or you do good for the world. But you, among many other examples that I often talk about, Orcam's a good example, a company that's worth over a billion dollars that's actually impacting people's lives. But Pico, you know, yeah, you're a VC and you invest in some amazing companies, shout out to Epistema, who I love, but uh, I just literally just got an email from Tika 30 seconds ago, but okay. more, more important than the VC aspect, or equally important, is you're doing good for the world. Correct. And I, and I think it's about the human condition, right? Financial KPIs will take us so far. Meaning and purpose just take us much further. I love it. And Pico brings together, under one roof, the ability for everyone who's part of our community to do both. Love it. I just want to give, before we jump to the social aspect, I and mean, you yourself, just to give a couple of, I mean, examples. I mean, you have Vroom. You're Vroom. Founder of Vroom. Co-founder of Vroom, executive chairman, helped Probably build that. Around, around yeah, a couple of billion. About a billion dollars, yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, a marketplace for cars. Correct. I don't know, who has, had More importantly than what it's worth, it's a billion dollar business. They actually revenue. sell Love revenues it. of a billion very, dollars. Very unique today. <laughs> Uber, <laughs> we work. Okay. Um, okay, so then there's Vroom, but you have some incredible, incredible investments. Let's put that aside for one second. Yeah. Okay, so what's Pico Kids? So what, what happened? What, what, I mean, let's, let's walk around. Okay. Let's Let's walk around. Let's walk around. All right. Let's do it. So we're, we're in the workshop here. Think of this as a modern classroom, okay? Kids come here not to learn from a book, but to, from, to learn by doing. Mm -hmm. We have a very simple equation. Every that, that wall, by the way, it's jumping out at me. This is a wall that was created by kids, right? So kids here who use Lego cells, sets to build robots said, Love hey, it. we want a Lego wall. Love it. And they painted the bricks before we ever even got started. Beautiful. Put the wall together. And there's a 3D printer over there, right? 3D printers all over, there's laser cutters, there's Love all it. sorts of things. Beautiful. We believe that the tools of the 21st century are technology, but at its core is the ability to be creative, Beautiful. to be problem solved. All right, let's see. Let's, go. Let's, let's walk around here. You see it's a very unique venue, to say the least. What are we looking at over here? This is a 1965 Susita. Everyone knows I'm involved with room selling cars. We're not selling this one. <laughs> This is a car that was made and manufactured in, in Israel. People usually don't think of Israel as a place where cars are made. This reminds kids and everyone that comes here to make whatever we set our hearts to. Love it. It was famous for Love its it. advertisements of a camel taking a bite out of the car. <laughs> Hence the hole here. Love it. To remind us of, of the history of this car. Beautiful. All right. What's up, people? Hi. Morning. How are you? Don't worry, it's just CNN. Not really. 
<laughs> Thank you. It's such a cool vibe. Where are the kids, though? Well, kids are in school now. They'll, they'll fill up the place in the afternoon, That's and right. we'll invite you to come back. Whoa! This is a laser cutter. You can design anything you like on the computer and stick in a piece of wood, metal, plastic, and poof, it gets cut right out. Incredible. Incredible. Come in here. We think of high tech as computers and bits and bytes software, and programming right? and software. Right. And this is actually like an old fashioned workshop, right? And you're going to wonder why this? What are we doing? We very much believe in something called the three T's Talmud, it's a way of thinking, it's argumentative, it questions everything. Technology, you know all about that. But most importantly, tachlis, right? It's a frame of mind. And that third T is about doing. So it's taking ideas, making sure that they aren't just dreams but that kids turn them into reality. Beautiful. It's using a workshop like this where kids build prototypes, they test their ideas, Super awesome. and they bring them back into the market. That's some of our amazing it's staff. Like They're the magicians behind the What's magic up? at Pico Kids. <laughs> Sticking a big camera on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it, man. It's amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful. 2,500 kids from every background, every walk of life find common ground at Pico Kids. Whether you're rich or poor, you're a boy or a girl. They come here after school. Underprivileged, overprivileged. Amazing. Technology is the road to a better future, right? Amen. Everyone wants to come together, be innovators, creative thinkers, and imagine what is possible by working and doing together. What are the criteria to get accepted as a kid? Anybody can just come? We're a pretty unique place. If you're motivated and you're willing to smile a lot, you're welcome to come to Pico Kids. That's awesome. I love it. Super cool. A few months ago about smart cities. And in Jerusalem, you may know that we have a lot of hills. Just take a look over there. That's a model built by kids of a pulley system that they envisioned to pull their bikes up the big hills of Jerusalem. That's cool. And that's the type of creativity that we're trying to get kids going here. Super cool. It doesn't matter whether it's you know real or fake, but the idea of building their ideas, getting them closer love to it. fruition, is what we're all about. Love it, love it. Jerusalem is the single biggest factor in the productivity of startup nation. More founders, more leaders of startups have been born in this city, come through this city, influenced by this city, and have gone out to do very big things. Give me some examples. Do you know Waves? Have you heard of Waves, hello? Heard of it. The CEO of Waves, okay. Noam Vardin, grew up five minutes from here. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Four of the founders of Iron Source, one of the biggest internet startups today. Third biggest advertising company in the world after Facebook and Google. Four of the seven founders were born and grew up in this city. Amazing. You've heard of Checkpoint? Heard of it. I think it's the highest market cap Israeli startup of all times. Makes sense. Founder Gil Schwed grew up in this city. You heard of Mellanox? Heard of it. I think the second or third largest m and transaction ever in Israel. The founder grew up in Jerusalem. One might say it's all a coincidence, but if you look and measure the economic output a startup nation as a whole, a full 50% or more of the economic value creation has been conducted by Jerusalemites. Incredible, incredible. Okay, so first of all, before we get started, who are you? What's your name? Aaron Horowitz. Aaron Horowitz. So we know each other from several different locations, several different directions, I should say. Number one, your sister and brother-in-law are collectively the man. So, so your, true, so your, true. Your brother-in-law uh, is Tamir Goodman, who was coined Jewish Jordan, and right. Judy and Tamir were my neighbors in Kivachmal. I think it was Kivachmal, yeah. Or Zichron, Kivachmal. I was in Zichron. Right. Just amazing people, just like downright amazing people. And so if, if I didn't like you because of all your work, I like you because you're Judy's brother. That's number one. Number two, give me your background because you've had quite an interesting background. What's, where did it all start? Grew up in the States, Cleveland, Ohio, still a Browns fan. Um, this year it'll be Full easy. <laughs> this year it will be easy to be a Browns fan. Okay. And uh, came to Israel after high school, served here in the military, went back to the States. What did you do in the army? I was in the infantry in Nahal, studied in college in New York at Columbia, moved back to Israel, founded an organization with uh, a friend, uh, Ariel Beery, called Present Tense. You, you can't just say a friend, Ariel Beery. Ariel Beery is a legend. A legend, Ariel Beery. The guy is freaking or detecting cervical cancer. Like what? I, I, I talk about him in every single talk that I, that I do. I'm as serious. As you should, as you should. Unbelievable company. Okay, and We yeah. ran that for, for just under a decade together. And then I left Present Tense to found a company that would um, help transform Jerusalem and turn it into a high-tech hub. And in the process, transform one of uh, the most important economic engines of really middle-class democracies, which is the automotive industry. And we- it's like uh, music to my ears, man. I we love are, all, all yeah. the words. And what we basically it. encountered is an industry that that um, generates unbelievable amounts of social and economic value, employs millions of people, 
yet the technology that they were using was more reflective of like the 80s and 90s. Say they. The automotive dealerships in particular. I mean, right. those, those, those points of sales in communities all across the United States, other yep. countries, that's where the employment happens, that's where the economic value is generated. Mm -hmm. The technology stack that they were using in many ways more reflected the 80s and the 90s was not ready to be future, to be future ready, meaning to go up against the Amazons and, and what's coming down the pike. And our whole platform is about future-proofing those dealerships right. so that they can compete compete in a digital era uh, with their marketing and their business processes. Okay, now let's, let's take it down like, like take it and, down. And that's why it's called Auto Lead Star. Oh, that's a good, that's We turn our auto dealers into leaders and stars. Well, yeah, first of all, I love that. Yeah. Because I was wondering about the name, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Full disclosure, I yeah, was yeah. wondering. No, it is, it is. Okay, so just tell Got me. Got on it. Okay, let's, let's say my, my mom is watching, which she is, hi mom. Yeah. Dumb this down for me. Like, your target audience are what, car dealerships? Yeah. We target car dealerships. Okay. Car dealerships today, as the internet has kind of swept through their industry, are yes. basically a name and a phone number and right. a website. Right. And what we want to do is give them a way to connect personally with every single visitor so that they can get that visitor shopper what they need. Okay. And uh, deliver in a way that that customer really wants. I'll uh, just tell you something. I bought a car this week. Yeah. True okay. Story. Miles okay. I literally drove. Great. I bought a car this week, and the experience. I just want to tell you how it went. I literally, I think it was a month and a half ago, posted on Facebook. I want to buy a car. I had eighty-five thousand comments of people saying, "Use this guy. Use this guy. Use this guy." I called a couple of people, found the guy. He took care of that thing end to end, and then I posted on Facebook and got a more business. That was yeah. the entire process. Great. Like it's you know these these tools we're all using them, and I feel like car dealerships are not even leveraging that at all. Yeah. So you're Very enabling much. them to leverage. Yeah. So we make what's known as marketing automation technology. Okay. where we do the whole funnel like we help them get website traffic that is gonna be high quality okay. we help them then engage almost like a front desk agent with their customers on the website to concierge and personalize that experience and then we help them take that data and figure out how to find more customers and, and provide an ongoing experience so you're bringing experience. car dealerships to the 21st century we are yes I mean, very much at the That's end of the do. day I often say if you look at every single winner across the board whether it's Facebook Uber Airbnb we work and on and on and on they're all doing the same thing in different industries they're taking something old and archaic and primitive and outdated and disrupting it using technology. Yeah, and here what's so interesting is it's if you think about transportation like heat and you know other core functions, it's a core human need that's existed for thousands of years. How to get from place A to place B. Right we on. are very much blessed to be taking an industry that is a hundred and something years old and moving them into that place where they can exist for another uh, period of time and provide people? that core human good. I love it. You, yeah. you had me though. How many people work here? 60 people. Wow. Yeah, we have, a, we have a really, really big so, team. We're, we're here in Israel. We're here, we're, we have an office in the U.S. in South Florida. Oh, wow. T people, people all over the U.S. now. Just give me like a context, the context here in terms of size of company. I mean, revenue, funding, what talk to me about so, that. Yeah, what so, yeah. you're allowed to say, I'm on camera. So I'll say what I'm allowed to say, but we're, we're growing extremely quickly month over month. So we have a, a pretty rapid growth rate, which is why we tripled the team in really the past like almost nine, ten months. We tripled our team. We've expanded our, our office size in both the U.S. and Israel. We have a, a, a rapidly growing company customer base with some of the biggest name dealers in uh, the in the United States. What's so funny is I grew up, I mentioned the Browns at the beginning, one of our first customers was um, John Elway's dealerships in Colorado, which of course is the Denver Broncos, Browns rivalry from when I was growing up in the 80s. But uh, we have like great customers like like Elway and others uh, across the US and are hoping to turn this company into a five, six hundred thousand person company uh, here in Jerusalem. I just have one today. question for you. Yeah. And, and, and this is I, uh, this is criticism. Go for it. Can you handle Please, it? yeah, I can take Why it. Why the hell have I not heard of this company till now? You know, we've been kind of under the radar, and uh, if you ask a lot of the people in our community, they'd, be, they'd say, ask the same question. No, but like, um, what? Okay. but that's why you're here, Hill. No, but I don't, like, how is that possible that I haven't heard of this company before? It's just, it's just, Ellie. I don't know. <laughs> how, I, 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 but here okay. we are. Listen, man, it's incredible. I love the Jerusalem aspect. I love the disrupting. Yeah. I love the. I love it all. I, I What's also it. crazy is we have now brought U.S. auto dealers from Middle America to Jerusalem, really? and they hang out in the shuk and go to the restaurants and experience what they experience. Incredible. Go to the vineyard of uh, Bachlomo and others. And shout out to yeah, you. Yeah, shout, shout, shout out. I love it, dude. Listen, yeah. man. Here's here's the, we're gonna walk around in a second because the vibe here is bananas. But yeah. but just my call to action is, and we're gonna have this discussion off camera. I love the story. You need to tell the story. Yeah. So you need to tell me how I can help do that. And any, uh, nothing, you know, anything I can do to help you guys. Anything. Awesome. You just, you consider me a secret weapon in your arsenal or whatever. But no, I mean, it's an amazing story and the world needs to hear it. And uh, I'm, I know that I'm going to now include another company in my talks. When I talk about Jerusalem, I talk about, you know, we just mentioned, we were just, Ellie and I were just discussing it about, you know, light tricks and we met Mobileye and about, and the list goes on. I, this should be one of those companies that people mention. Yeah. And for that, you have to do your job. You're a CEO, Absolutely. right? Yep. CEO. Yeah. Love it, man. All right. So let's, let's walk around because this place is awesome. Great. So where are we right now? Like, okay. We are in. 
we are in southeastern Jerusalem in the industrial zone, which is rapidly transforming with the presence of Pico and other startups uh, and startups. Um, and we're in particular on a street called Yad HaRutzim. Yep. So this is our office. Everyone is at lunch now, so it looks like a ghost town, but it's usually just packed and thriving and lively. Look how beautiful call, it is. So we call this the crossroads. The crossroads is where people meet, and you'll notice that every room is actually named after a street in Jerusalem. Each sign, each street is a place where we had a little office in our journey. So over the years, as we built ourselves up, we kind of moved, you know, apartments, public libraries, random offices tucked into random buildings, and now we're here uh, really, uh, really growing it out. Love it, love it. Yeah. So basically, this is the crossroads where folks meet. Back there we have kitchen. Um, our, the way we work is every single one of our products has like a squad and each squad has a room and each room has a huddle room where people can kind of break out and easily uh, interact. It, 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 it kind of increases efficiency, makes it easy for people to work. Dishan, one of my co-founders. He's just a co-founder. Yeah. Oh, we went to high school together. Yeah. Love it, man. This is such a beautiful yeah, office, dude. Back. I'm like, we have Who designed this? Suri did almost all the design. Did you really? Yeah. You oh, should. wow. Yeah. Big compliment. Big, big shout out to That's Suri. amazing. Yeah. She's, that's her job here? She's like interior? No, no, no. She just is hanging, stopping by for lunch, but she is an interior designer. So she Sorry. took this on as a project to just build out her portfolio. Incredible, incredible man. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And then we have here like all of our US customer support facing uh, folks. In there is our product room where our product teams work, design studio, conference room. Um, back there is what we call the Zen room. This is some other kind of leadership team. And it's nice in here. Yeah, cool. this is where I keep it because I like it. Free. Love it, man. Love it. Who are you? Who's this good looking guy? <laughs> Hi. What's Ari your role here? COO. COO. In charge Beautiful. of the customer, customer oh, team. When was the last time we met? About a year and a half ago, I believe it was. some good cow. Yeah, it was excellent. So you remember that. That's good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. This is Thank incredible. Thank for, for coming Let's in. sit now. Let's sit down. You ever have a day that made you actually dizzy? Yeah, today was absolutely nuts. Crazy day. Incredible. New wheels. Tomorrow's going to be awesome. See you then.